Good afternoon, everyone. I want to welcome you to IMC High Point Market and our programming for our June market, which we will actually be on site having market start next week, um, which is running June 5th through 9th. And we invite you to come join us on site. If you can't, um, we welcome you to check out our website at imchighpointmarket.com. And you'll be able to go through all of the exhibitor information, registration information, um, kind of see the new products and trends. And going into trends, that's what we're talking about today. Um, today is Trend Watch with Julie Smith Vincenti of Nine Muses Media. She will be sharing the three different um, trends that we have for market. And this is CEU accredited, so if you need that, it will be emailed out to those who are joining us by Zoom. If you need that credit, you can email me at kporter at imcenters.com, and I'll send you that accreditation afterward. Um, I'm Kimberly Porter, the Senior Programming Manager. So if you have any other questions, you can email those to me regarding High Point Market or Las Vegas Market. Um, if you do have any questions while Julie is presenting, go ahead and you can put those into the Q&A tab and we'll get to those towards the end. Um, Julie, I'll let you begin. Thanks so much, Kim, and thank you everyone for joining us this late morning, early afternoon, depending on the time zone you're in. I'm so happy to uh, share this season, late spring trend watch themes with you. Um, as Kim had mentioned, we're slowly making our way back to market. So while we're coming to you virtually in another webinar, uh, we are bringing the displays, or at least a portion of the Trend Watch displays, back to market. So if you know the program, you know that we've been in three locations. We are typically in the entrance of the green lobby of IHFC. We're in the Showplace walkway, and we're in the entrance to the suites at Market Square. The this time around, we're just at the suites at Market Square. And what we did is we took all three of our themes and sort of pushed them into this one display. As a result, there's a lot of great um, uh, symmetry and synchronicity between the uh, themes this time around. And um, one of the other things that's new for market is we had asked all of the companies that submitted, so just as a brief moment, we identify our themes, we ask all tenants that exhibit in IMC-owned buildings to submit products that adhere to those themes. I've got the great honor and privilege of uh, winnowing all those submissions down to the winners. Um, and so then uh, what we ask this time around is if companies that were featured uh, in our display would be interested in participating in a product giveaway. And so that's a nice new component that I'll talk a little bit about in a couple of slides. With that being said, this year's three themes are mixtape, melange, and resilience and resolve. So just to kind of give you an overview of the three themes uh, here in this initial slide, because throughout the presentation, everything is really kind of mixed in together. And again, I designed because we have just the one display this time around. In mixtape, we are totally tuned into 1980s redux. Mixtape epitomizes the vibe of that decade. Mixtapes were dubbed art for the masses and they celebrated individualism and creativity. Now mixtapes for those of us who made them and listened to them understand that they are the sort of precursors or the early playlists, though it was a much more engaged and tangible experience than simply clicking a button on Amazon Music or Spotify. That being said, in this uh, presentation, 80s era icons and influences are all synthesized together. Look for neon lights that radiate rad, black and white pairings, new wave compositions, and patterns that are as catchy as sort of hip hop plus uh, lively pastels. In melange, as the name implies, mix, we are mixing um, 
various inspirations and the end result is kind of a 20th century master class. We have influences that range from brutalism and abstract expressionism all the way up to Scandinavia and Japandi. Um, bas relief surfaces, romantic flourishes, crowd pleasing accents, they all come together. And it's really a continuation of a neutral story that we talk about each season. And it's a continuation of that sort of trend toward home curation, that uh, home curator who is making the decisions to create her, um, her interiors that uh, are seem truly unique. And lastly, in resilience and resolve, as the name implies, it kind of touches, uh, takes a pulse point of the time that we're in. Uh, for those uh, who recall at the top of the year, purple was a color that took on uh, significance during the inauguration. Um, the idea that the color purple implies compromise, but it means many other things as well introspection, intuition, spirituality, luxury, grandeur, awakening, and harmony. With that being said, we did, um, so briefly, um, throughout the presentation, if you look for this arrow and scan at Sam's, that's Suites at Market Square, uh, what this means is that when you get to High Point Market at the display, look for the QR code. If you scan that QR code, you are entered to win a product from one of the brands here that we wanted to give special thanks to Abigail's Aviva Stanoff, Jaipur, Norasan, Pacific Coast Lighting and Wexel Art. Uh, designs from those companies are in the display and they're available for you to win at market so long as you scan at Sam's. Anyway, I have this little icon throughout the presentation so you'll know which products are available. So mixtapes. Um, for, for those of us who spent our formative years in the 80s, we knew, we know how amazing these were, right? Um, there was an essayist who described the mixtape as perhaps the most widely practiced American art form. You received this blank canvas, you created your liner notes, you doodled and sketched on the spine, you used your um, special markers to actually draw <clears throat> on the cassettes themselves. <clears throat> And ultimately, you made dedications. You waited on. You waited for the song you wanted to come on the radio, and you went to your boombox and pressed record. It was a very interactive experience. Everyone sort of became their own music producer. Everyone became the master of their own playlist. Walkmans made it possible to bring that music with you wherever you went, and you um, were voila, instant artist. Um, the reason that music is such a profound influence as we look at the 1980s as, a, as an era of inspiration and design is because we know that on August 1st, 1981, MTV made its debut with Video Killed the Radio Star. And with that being said, um, the station would go on to revolutionize the music industry and become an extremely influential source of um, pop culture and entertainment in the US beyond and beyond. MTV sort of pushed boundaries, maybe not right at the get-go, but it pushed boundaries and tested the mores of the time. It was also when we saw celebrities and musicians begin to infuse political commentary, music, fashion, movies, television, politics, sexual identity, personal lifestyle, even the sort of early stages of the fitness craze, diet fads, you name it, the 80s had it. What's interesting from a, like in terms of the landscapes that we were taken to, music videos took us to places and entertained us. We also found ourselves like going to places we may not have normally, mainstream America may not have normally been, right? The sort of gritty vibe of the New York streets, punk and rap, um, uh, pop stars appearing in our favorite mood movies, beginning to sort of champion for the underdog characters featured in films, acceptance. Um, that being said, um, with these various inspirations at play this season, 
Um, I'm opening with a very fitting image for our curation, the King of Purple, right? Prince, Purple Rain, uh, as well as uh, a, 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 the 80s King of, of Purple, Prince. So um, throughout the presentation, um, we have product that was selected for today, for the presentation. We have product that was selected for the presentation and the display. We weren't able to fit everything into that one vignette. And then I also have a lot of visuals that I've kind of peppered in to give some context, you know, some context to, to a lot of the products that we're featuring. So that being said, when I identify a product by the company, it is part of our curation at one. It won, so to speak. Um, the other thing is, um, as a participant today, you'll receive a link that allows you to download a companion PDF that spells out the, that shows a thumbnail of the product, it shows the company name, and it shows the showroom location for the featured brands. This is Prince Kiss by Robert Robertson for RFA Decor. This is a hand embellished gicle on fine art paper of an original acrylic painting. Music, as I said, was so instrumental in the 1980s and it gave rise to a number of iconic images and personal expressions sort of became the norm. Um, that being said, here we're looking at a couple of photos on the left just I've included for some reference, the um, infamous Jean-Paul Goud photo of Grace Jones. Um, who doesn't remember the Robert Palmer videos and the iconically you know, dressed uh, women in uh, his various songs. But the company that has made it in our curation is Greg Lotus Photography, which I believe is a first time exhibitor at market. And the image on the right is called Black Balls. This is a photographic print that measures 40 inches by 60 inches. Um, this photographer is uh, has a great sort of editorial portfolio alongside some of these great images and this one so very much recalls the 1980s. As I mentioned, um, music took us to these different landscapes and they took us to the streets and they took us to places where dance and and um, uh, break dancing and other locations that that really showed a different kind of backdrop. And so to that end, that sort of urban street savvy vibe is conjured or evoked here in these designs. Um, the area rug on the left is from Neurosan's Prismatic Collection. The black background creates this captivating space for these very serene, almost rainbow-like palettes. Please take note of rainbow palettes. We're going to talk about that as the end, as a segue into 2022. Um, the area rug is hand tufted from a wool and silk like fibers. So like all of the collections in the prismatic collection, or excuse me, like all of the designs in the prismatic collection, it has a wonderful hand. Be outspoken, that is the design on the right that is, features both leather that's dyed a dusty plum color, as well as a soft chocolate brown heron hide Brazilian cow hide. Um, the dyes that are used are Italian, eco-friendly Italian pigments. And the artist um, sort of shared a comment um, with regard to inspiration for this. Um, we each have our own way of shining our light out into the world, and we can all make the choice to be one of those people. And so uh, I thought that was worth sharing on this. Note, too, that there is a rope detail around the design, as well as some grommets. You can feature this design on the floor, or you can certainly hang it on a wall. Some variations of that idea on these two wallpapers from Fenwick Bartel. Um, each is uh, commercial grade and has the Green Guard gold certification. Um, one idea of being a little more tame than the other. Um, and then the area rug on the lower right side of the screen is from French Accent Rugs and it's aptly named in um, as it is part of the company's deconstruction collection. Another design from RFA Decor, this is actually a complement to that Prince Kiss piece that I showed you earlier. This is a hand embellished gicle on canvas, also by Robert Robinson. It's a 62 inches by 42 inches. 
Um, the lamp on the right of the screen is from Fine Art Handcrafted Lighting. It's the Sobe lamp and it features that same kind of loose brush stroke um, that you see on the painting. It's um, made, it's black glass that has dichronic highlights and uh, gold lining on the interior of that shade. Meanwhile, Union Holmes cocktail table is this sort of classic shape, but it's given an edgier vibe with that patina stain finish to really up the sort of individualism of the piece. And then taking the whole conversation of sort of a street inspiration, brush strokes and abstract to another level is this handmade, hand painted wallpaper from the Hallen. This is Naranjos Valencia and it has this lovely fluidity to it. It comes in 30 inch wide panels and then is made to a custom length as needed and absolutely is a, is, is a pitch perfect example of this 80s influence made modern for today's sensibilities. So in talking about the 80s, I absolutely have to talk about the Memphis Group, a group of designers led by Ettore Saustis, who came together to um, challenge the idea of minimalism. Um, here's a small little bit of trivia. Um, I mention it because we know uh, that uh, Bob Dylan just turned 80 this year. Anyway, the reason it's called the Memphis Group is because Bob Dylan's song Stuck Inside of Mobile with the Memphis Blues again was playing when the group met to come together and discuss some of the early ideas behind this group. They used clashing colors, they use haphazard arrangements, um, plastic laminates and terrazzo. Uh, the pieces were originally designed to be functional, but then they became these kind of commentaries on everyday objects. Uh, in this particular slide, I have classic examples from the 80s from the Memphis group, as well as modern interpretations that sort of pay homage to that design. One piece at it here and there um, really gives a room a lot of personality and creates a sort of instant conversation piece for sure. At the time, the idea was all of this together. And as you can see, the likelihood, the, the, the mass appeal of this particular interior, maybe not so much. But for modern sensibilities, or at least for the consumer or homeowners today, designs that are rooted in brutalism and still borrow from some of that technique and that sort of design influence combined with some of these forms and these shapes that feel very much in the spirit of the Memphis group seem quite pitch, seem quite appropriate. So these pieces are part of our curation. The table on the left of your screen, as well as the chair, are both in our display. Um, Union Home is the strata side table. It's about 18 inches high. The soft curves, that round base with that graduated disc that um, creates great movement. The matte black finish is very timely, uh, certainly to create both drama and contrast in an interior. The chair is Piero chair from James by Jimmy De Laurentiis. Here the modern lines are created through that horizontal tufting that very much feels in the Memphis group spirit. A luxurious statement in dark worn wool. Um, one of the things to keep in mind is with the 80s as an inspiration source is the prominence of more curvaceous forms and more rounded forms. We'll talk about that in just a second. The table, the cocktail table or coffee table is Arco. It's from Cavaletto Home. They're going to be in Inter Hall, this market, and the um, brutalist uh, influences are very evident here. Same too with these two vases from Studio A. One is called Melting, one is called Twist. They look like they're made of bronze, but in fact, it's slipcast ceramic and creates this sort of sense of, according to the artist um, or the designer, I should say, it's um, the idea evokes cooling lava. As I had mentioned, curves are important when we start talking about 1980s era influences. 
While this image is not part of our curation per se, I had to include it because it really is kind of a blueprint for some of where these 80s inspirations are landing in our more um, a spare or minimalist rooms, unlike what we saw in that interior done full up in the Memphis group style. So note those sort of rounded arches, the sort of rounded forms on the upholstered bed, those um, linear forms in the materials mix on the nightstand, as well as the round element, these circular elements. And then take note too of the neon light um, of the wall decor. Um, that being said, I'll just take a brief moment to identify that this is a new area rug collection from Melanie Morris, and um, it's the Melanie Morris pop collection for Fayette. It's got these great bold graphics. Um, needless to say, we have some designs that um, recall or, or evoke that same idea. Um, the chair, the upholstered chair is from Dovetail. That's their rounded lounge chair, full on texture and comfort um, with the brushed brass base, brushed brass appears and brass and bronze in general appear uh, often in this season's curation. Um, just enough detail with this very tightly upholstered frame for a very modern look. I included the wall decor, the colored glass from Bungalow 5 that's on the left of your screen. It's the Romano wall mirror. And um, obviously colored glass has been around for a while, but the way that this sort of faceting comes together, a kind of kaleidoscopic effect feels very much in the spirit of the 80s. And while Tove Furniture um, uh, didn't participate in our program this year, when this image landed in my inbox, I knew I had to feature it because it is such a pitch perfect example of 80s inspiration, right down to that sort of mauve coral pinkish color that feels very much of the moment right now. The channeling there and those rounded forms, again, are perfect examples of this kind of mood that we're moving into that starts to challenge some of the mid-century modern design that's just been very dominant in our space for a long time. Another example of those same colors and that sort of 80s modern vibe coming in. This is from Bontempi Casa, also in the Interhall, this market. Um, you're seeing here the serving cart, the mirror, the pendant lights, the table, and two styles of chairs are all from the brand. A um, couple different designs here. Lots of um, customization option in this collection or all the pieces that you see here. Um, same to the customization story coming in at a slightly lower price point, a similar idea visually. Um, this is from Amisco. You've got a tabletop options, you've got bench seating options, fabric options, and the finish um, is called Sun Gold. Now, in the um, neon lighting didn't exactly, uh, wasn't born in the 1980s, but there were a number of artists that made um, their conceptual art with neon light as an inspiration or as an element of that design. The recent reissue of The Wonder Woman was set in 1984. For those of you who have children and Netflix or children of a certain age and Netflix, you know that Stranger Things, that sort of 80s um, throwback, sci-fi film with the season four coming out soon, my daughter likes to remind me, uh, incorporates that sort of neon light element. Last Night in Soho is a logo from a movie I think that's coming out later this year. And then the um, other art installation pieces, the Vices and Virtues, for instance, as well as the piece on the lower right and the middle right are both by um, the conceptual artist Bruce Nauman whose work, um, he created these works in the 1980s. Um, so with that being said, we also have some designs that recall this sort of neon light element. Um, these are two pieces from RFA Decor by an artist named Cookie Ashton, Petite Blue, as well as Mystic Visions 3. Left Bank Art submitted Luminous Flux 1 and 2. These are gicle printed on canvas, and there actually is an LED neon light 
Um, so these pieces are uh, need to be wired. Um, it's a pretty exciting wall decor collection for sure. Um, there's that mention of Scan at Sam's. These two pieces are from Wexel Art. Um, they're called It's a Jungle Out There by the artist Maggie McDonald, uh, printed on canvas, and then they're framed in acrylic shadow boxes. You know, acrylic plastic materials, very much in the spirit of 1980s inspired design. Few color options available, and the company is offering um, both those pieces um, for the giveaway. Again, so when you're at market and you go to the entrance of Suites at Market Square, be sure to scan that QR code and you'll automatically be entered to possibly win. Lastly, the piece on the right is from A&B Home. It's a vibrant neon green glass vase. For those of us who like 80s fashion, you know that uh, big sequence or paillette were uh, kind of popular in some of the collections back in the 80s. And Aviva Stanoff has issued these two uh, designs uh, this season. These are the angel wing pillows. And she's also offering these kind of stone sort of heart um, Objet uh, this season as well. Um, the pieces are made in hand, made by hand in the California studios, and just immediately add this sort of engaging texture layer that feels very much in the spirit of the '80s. Speaking of dressing in the '80s, you know that sheer or mesh was so huge. Um, here's some pieces that recall that. Um, general idea, and in the upper right of your screen, I've got um, a couple of. Uh, Instagram accounts you might choose to follow, as well as some hashtags to follow for the, you know, balance of this calendar year, where we'll be featuring some of the product from Trendwatch, as well as our companion program, First Look, which we produce in Las Vegas market. Um, so um, feel free to add those to your um, follow universe and we will show more designs like these here but these mesh pieces feel very much in the spirit of the 80s now uh in the 80s there was also quite um a reverence for art deco design and to that end um you might remember the russian artist erte who had that sort of moment in the 80s and in fact i was doing a quick google search you can still get the erte 2022 wall calendar just goes to show how uh, long-standing his work has been. In this particular slide, I just want to mention the um, desk from Bungalow 5, which is part of our curation, um, and also just the nod that uh, during the 80s, Art Deco influences were popular. And in fact, we saw some submissions come in that really speak to that or that reinforce that idea. The Lana desk is from Bungalow 5, as I said. Um, High-end materials are absolutely on display here. The uh, tassel hardware is custom bronze. It's a straight grain oak uh, finish that also comes in a, bleach oak, um, a bleached oak option. Both are Art Deco and both feel very modern in terms of laptop desk solutions. So these were some of the designs that we included in our curation. Um, the Latilla Tall Bar Cabinets from Studio A. It has um, some great details, open those doors, and it feels immediately as luxurious and swank as you would expect of a bar cabinet. The Melodia Sofa and Ottoman are true divas in the coral velvet with brushed brass finished solid wood legs. As is the case in a lot of Art Deco design, animals were incorporated into this very sort of elegant way. This is a new company that submitted for Trendwatch this time around. Um, I believe they're in the suites at Market Square. It's Pasco Gallery, and they have really, really high-end African art and animal motifs that very much feel in the spirit of Art Deco. Um, zebras um, within the company's um, uh, assortment of designs sort of represent freedom and individualism. Um, certainly go see this company at market. Uh, the pieces are, as I said, very high end. It's gallery quality work. It's also really exciting to go to their website just to kind of see everything. It's really magnificent art indeed. Some additional Art Deco references and, you know, I, I should have added like a little bell sound effect. Ding, ding, ding. 
you uh, go to our display and you scan that QR code that I've mentioned a few times right now, you'll uh, be entered to win um, potentially these pillows from Nurasan. Those are the two designs on the left, as well as the area rug um, from Jaipur, which is the area rug on the right of your screen, as well as that table lamp from Pacific Coast Lighting. So um, really quick, um, uh, additional Art Deco influences very evident here. You've got this hand beaded lavender pillow. That's from uh, Nurasan's Mina Victory Homes Accent Division. It's the Luminescence Collection. Uh, the pillow on the bottom is embossed polyester velvet and this really pretty plum color option. The area rug in the center is from Creative Touch, the Corcovado. It blends both Art Deco and modern eras in this sort of monochromatic pink and scarlet colorway that just feels very much of the current moment. Um, hand knotted in India with silk accents and just as a note recommended for sort of low traffic areas. Jaipur's iconic hand tufted area rug has this really distinct retro shape with those really pronounced curves. The colors zephyr green with that great gold detail. Meanwhile, that table lamp also available as a floor lamp is Madison Park in this warm gold finish. And so as I had mentioned with regard to melange, it's really mixing a lot of different um, artistic periods and it's like a master class in modern art and uh, modern fine art. Um, Abigail's is offering the uh, uh, plate uh, platter, the Barcelona platter on the left as part of our product giveaway. And it's handmade in Italy. It looks great uh, as a serving piece, but also great hung on the wall. Pop art and those pops of black and white as a nod to sort of 80s influences. Uh, the table there, it's actually a set of nesting tables from Sagebrook Home. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't include uh, uh, books in a sort of Warhol-esque pop art uh, featuring Mick Jagger. Um, so those are um, those are actually just the spines, just a visual of the spines. Uh, the collections from E. Lawrence Limited, you can buy an individual book or a volume of 12. And the wall decor on the right is from Left Bank Art. It's called Entangled Chemistry One. Moving into sort of more like the melange inspiration for this season's displays, we have these great tactile neutrals. So really quickly, we have Cloud Nine's digitally distressed Bella pillows. I apologize if you're hearing cats fighting in the background. Um, it has a mix of gray dyed velvet and this gold foil design, Fall in Love. The love is actually a scripted and hand beaded um, elements, embellishment. The cabinet is from Hooker Furniture's Westland Accent uh, chest, uh, uh, their melange collection. This is the Westland Accent chest. Mango wood with this really fun sort of brass foil detail element that really begs to be touched. The um, decorative objet is from Regina Andrew Design, these interlocking uh, rings uh, sized for shelf display or desk display. Uh, the table is from Bungalow Five's Calypso collection, really a one of a kind. It has genuine buffalo horn that's inlaid on linen and then lacquered to create this really high-end mood. You heard me mention that our melange trend also includes some of the Japandi influences, a sort of Scandinavian design, these sort of sculptural forms alongside a sort of brutalist piece as well, but in this light, really airy, lovely, um, assembly of products here. Uh, flirt drinks table with that fluted satin ivory finishes from Global Views. The chair is the Tory dining chair from Indo Puri. It has this great um, sturdy teak base. It's very lightweight. It has a lovely sort of um, stand on its own accent chair quality. And lastly, that table is called the Aqueduct Dining Table. It's a very, um, offered in a variety of finishes. I love that very sculptural base that is um, new at Inner Hall from Casa Inspirada. This very tactile hand crafted piece is from TRRA Muebles, which is 
uh, an exhibitor that we featured a couple of times in Trend Watch, and they just got such a lovely tailored look, very artisanal, and with those rounded edges, feels very modern and sort of at the same time sort of vintage to it's walnut wood with that sort of gray tapestry, and I love that sort of button sort of detail on there. Um, brush strokes are still part of our conversation, and these designs and these neutral palettes. Um, Benson Cobb's Entanglement Number no. Four is a framed canvas. Celadon's um, this new collection is called the um, Samuqua Series One and Two. It's by an artist who uses a specific style of brush painting to create these kind of circular forms great movement in these designs. It's a series of three, I'm just showing two here. Uh, the artist, if I didn't mention it, is Taylor King, Kim, Taylor Kim, and each measures 46 inches by 28 inches. Um, if you've been attending some of our presentations throughout this, um, throughout 2020 and 2021, you know that we've uh, spent a lot of time talking about um, artist marks and linear forms. And uh, these designs that came in for this season's curation, I think are perfect examples of that. So we have an area rug from Neuroson's Symmetry Collection and notice the icon there. Um, these ombre gray lines are sort of in this cut pile across this, this ivory field to create a great textural experience. Meanwhile, um, Dovetail Furniture's Tigris bent bamboo chair is an instant classic that's comfortable too. Um, in a space, it creates a great sort of shadow play as the light hits it throughout the day. So the piece kind of takes on a very um, artistic um, uh, persona as well. Uh, lastly, that's an outdoor pillow from Nurusan with those great um, applique uh, woven braid uh, elements across the face of the pillow, fade resistant, indoor, outdoor. A similar mood, again, with this sort of tactile experience, these kind of sculptural qualities, and of course, the neutrals. And so the designs we have here are from Sam Moore is the chair, that's the Cabell chair with that exposed wood front rail that meet together in the back to create a really interesting, um, potential to sort of float that in the room with the sort of pattern that evokes the sort of Southwest mood. Um, we have this vase from Studio A that has a sandstone finish that looks very much like a piece from the antiquities with that rattan wrapped handle, that asymmetrical body. It's made of a eco sort of mixed material, but it's that sandstone finish, I think that really gives it um, uh, much of its appeal. Amity Home, meanwhile, captures comfort and casual elegance in this top of bed presentation. Uh, Cambria is a new duvet. It has this pinstripe that's woven horizontally throughout the um, duvet and comes in three colors. Slade, meanwhile, is an enzyme washed hand quilted cotton uh, uh, duvet that's in the color called asphalt. Uh, according to the company, this quilt must be touched to believe its softness. I invite you to do so at market. Again, it's from Amity Home. The bolster pillow is Teja. That's the long bolster pillow um, uh, profile that's so... Um, looks so great on top of bed collections. And then lastly, the Caprice chair from Essentials for Living is part of our dis uh, vignette. You can see that in the display at market. We've got this lovely sumptuous collection from Ann Gish, which mixes um, crock, Komodo, and diamond dust. And when you get up close to this particular design, the fam fabrics really do shimmer. Uh, according to the company, like diamonds, and so a very lush, elegant experience. So moving into our sort of resilience and resolve, where purple sort of takes on, um, shows its various um, personalities, we have here the Alishan cashmere throws, um, available in a range of colors, including plum and wisteria. We have Norwalk's very personable Whistler sofa in this um, great sort of fig plum cover. And then another of the bolster pillows from Amity Home. This is part of their collection called Reloom, in which they employ weavers um, and empower sort of homelessness and low income individuals. 
um, create these sort of one of a kind products through recycled materials. So there's a great sort of backstory behind the designs in this Reloom collection. Some additional purple personalities, you know, gray, as you know, um, can take on a purple cast, a blue cast, or a green cast. And so here's an example of gray with a sort of purple cast to it, as well as Spiker and Company's bull's eye, always expanding vinyl round floor covering. And the textiles in the image on the right are from Daniel Design Studio, a sort of a whisper of lavender. These purples are color complements to one of the colors of the co-colors of the year from Pantone, obviously illuminating, that's the yellow. And so as a complement, um, there are two co-colors of the year, illuminating and gray, as you know. And uh, it seems to me that um, the best examples incorporate black and white. Um, you see that in the piece of wall decor from RFA decor on the right of your screen. And um, note too that um, within the styling of this shot, the actual cassette tape element, those are actually like old cassette tapes that the stylist um, incorporated into their studio setting. Just another example, these aren't necessarily part of our curation, but just to show this sort of yellow working best, yellow and gray sort of best with sort of black and white. This is from our um, recent presentation for First Look that I thought I'd include these white, um, gray, and yellow examples, and, and the two Pantone colors of the year looking really great in sort of a bathroom setting. Uh, take note, the mirror, that asymmetrical mirror is from Global Views. It's their bean bevel mirror. It's made in this like really, um, sophisticated, it's made in Italy in order to achieve that really organic abstract shape out of bevel. Um, it's really a great looking piece. Um, Southern Home shared these uh, pieces from Outdoor. We'll talk a little bit more about Outdoor in a future presentation. Needless to say, this is their Corsica collection with the smoke rope or storm gray uh, wrapping option. Um, in terms of motifs coming in strong here in 2021, obviously lemons and that dovetails really nicely with yellow being named one of the colors of the year. I'm almost done with the presentation here, but just wanted to share this submission from Sugar Boo. Um, the artist and owner of the company, Rebecca Puig, is debuting this new design. And the idea for the times that we're in, kindness really matters. Um, hoping that this random acts of kindness uh, sort of continue on into the years ahead following this crazy extraordinary time that we've been through. Earlier in the presentation, I'd made mention of rainbow palettes, and I think it's important to, uh, I think this, this, this image is an important example of what I mean when I say um, rainbow palettes coming in strong for 2022. Uh, this is from a European uh, brand, tabletop brand. The perfect example of um, a more sort of retro rainbow inspired and these sort of modern reissued ceramic uh, pieces from the 80s. Here's another example of these rainbow palettes. It may not be that, you know, these, these bright rainbow colors are all featured on a single product, but it's the grouping together of these brights that I think is worth taking note of moving into 2022. The um, desk lamp that you see there is from Concept. That's the Z-Bar mini desk lamp. That's part of our curation. The um, Shutterstock is a online resource for stock imagery and they issue their color palettes. And I uh, included that um, worth taking a look at how they're sort of tackling these rainbow brights. And the sofa on the top is new from James by Jimmy De Laurentiis, which you can see at Inner Hall, this market. Another two examples, if you've been on my presentations recently, whether for Las Vegas or High Point Market, you know I've been crazy for this textile artist named Bisa Butler, whose work is featured at the Art Institute right now. I live in Chicago. It's a glorious, glorious um, uh, uh, exhibit and uh, a perfect example of these rainbow brights together, as well as an artist, a photographer that, that I, whose work I like is um, where she uses both analog and digital photography practices, uh, processes rather, to show um, these various filtered effects that have that same kind of rainbow-like idea. And then after lemons, after rainbow palettes, after the colors of 
the year after our 80s influences um, all sort of eyes on the um, Disney's latest um, origin story villain origin story Cruella and um, just in seeing some of the trailers and some of the imagery coming out of this film, number one, that jacket looks like it might have been something from a Michael Jackson video from the 80s for sure, but just um, these great powerful shoulder pads. And then obviously in Emma Thompson's character, those evident Art Deco influences. I included this as this great sort of synergy of these 1980s inspirations coming together in one. So. With that being said, um, thank you so much for tuning in. And don't forget to um, spend some time checking out our display at the Suites of Market Square and maybe winning one of our products. Thanks so much, everybody. See you at market.